Uh, good morning. I'd like to thank the Society for the opportunity to present uh, minimally invasive versus open surgery for aortic valve replacement. Now, when I was asked to do this literature review, it reminded me of the anecdote of the uh, partridge hunt, uh, where a GP, a uh, surgeon and a pathologist are out uh, shooting, um, and a, uh, the GP looks up, sees a bird in the air, and he says, I think that might be a partridge, but I'm not sure. It, it might be a grouse. Uh, the pathologist is just about to offer his opinion when the surgeon lifts his gun, shoots it, hands the dead bird to the pathologist and says, be a good chap, uh, give that to my statistician and tell me whether I'm better at shooting partridges or grouse. And I think that shows the kind of attitude that we have. We often uh, go straight into the fray without considering the evidence and I'd like you to try and stay open-minded uh, about what I present here, no matter what your technique. I've got no financial disclosures, but um, I'm presenting slides that my co-authors and I uh, have put together from a Cochrane review that was published last year. Aortic valve disease, as you all already know, is very prevalent. Uh, around 1 in 50 over 75-year-olds will have the disease, and it's not benign. Um, there's a very high rate of events, including death, um, for severe symptomatic disease um, in a short period of time. Aortic valve replacement was first performed by Lilia High in uh, 1958, so it's a well-established uh, treatment for aortic valve disease. Uh, the mortality at that stage was around 1 in 20, and it's dropped uh, right down to what it is now. The long-term outcomes are excellent even for patients who have mechanical valves and are on anticoagulation, which does rather beg the question as to why we'd want to change it, and of course... Uh, with excellent outcomes, the surgeon's initial reaction is to tinker with things. So Rao and Kumar were the first to uh, do a non-stenotomy aortic valve replacement. Um, they did two 20-year-old females in 1993, purely for cosmetic reasons, uh, using a 20-centimetre non-mini uh, thoracotomy, um, and they used central cannulation. A few years yet later... Uh, Cosgrove and Sabic coined the term minimally invasive, um, but did a 10 centimetre parasternal incision, uh, excising two ribs, uh, which by today's standards might not be considered minimally invasive. They used peripheral cannulation, um, and this was all to avoid uh, doing a stenotomy. Uh, subsequently, uh, Liu did a J-staped stenotomy. Cohn tried uh, an inverted T. Uh, Ouchbach did a horizontal uh, stenotomy uh, and then later on the same year did uh, an S-shaped uh, stenotomy which makes you wonder whether that was deliberate or uh, an errant registrar opening the chest. So why are all these surgeons trying to avoid a full stenotomy? It's, it's well tolerated, it gives you good exposure um, and generally gives you unfettered surgery. Well, proponents of the minimally invasive techniques say that um, the disruption of the thoracic cage uh, delays your upper body weight bearing and therefore mobility, gives you poorer cosmesis, um, affects your breathing, and of course, although they're rare, um, uh, deep stonal wound infections can certainly be quite devastating for the patient. So we look to try and establish equipoise between uh, the two uh, techniques. Um, and that's where a large number of the studies um, that have been performed seem to fail. On the one hand, you've got MINI with the advantages shown here, um, and then full stenotomy, which has shorter cross-clamp times, an excellent pedigree, perhaps reduced costs because of the greater throughput, um, is more even. Ease of surgery might also be considered a factor, and then the mini surgeons will offer their opinions on the reduced complications. But the most important thing are, are these two uh, different techniques equally safe? So the Cochrane review that we performed was uh, a meta-analysis of mini stenotomy, so any kind of non-full stenotomy versus a full stenotomy, um, and I'll explain why we didn't include the mini thoracotomy slightly later on. Um, the primary outcome measure were safety measures and uh, surrogate measures of safety, so mortality, MACE, and um, time on extracorporeal circulation. Uh, there were some secondary outcome measures as well, which... Uh, you would expect with large studies. 
Uh, in total, we found 228 papers, and once these had been screened and filtered, uh, there was seven randomised controlled trials comparing hemistenotomy to full stenotomy. You'll note that uh, in the papers that were um, excluded, there was three complete studies uh, that had no available data, and hopefully the Maverick and the Mini Stern data uh, will be forthcoming, and we'll get some results from Enoch later on. So there was 511 studies in seven trials conducted over uh, um, 17 years, uh, performed largely in Europe, but also one from North Africa. All used a central cannulation technique, um, but implanted a variety of um, tissue and mechanical valves using various different techniques. Um, probably the most important difference to note is that one trial by Borger used a rapid deployment valve in one arm of the study only. So you could argue that there was some bias in, in that study in using a rapid deployment technique for one arm only. However, it was argued that that was part of the minimally invasive process. The data quality, as you can see, uh, has swathes of red and yellow, um, largely because of non-blinding of the participants, um, but also because the sample sizes in all of these were quite uh, small. The Cochrane Review found that the majority of these studies were underpowered, there was multiple biases, the data uh, comparing the studies and also within the studies was heterogeneous and there was lots of indirect measures. So I'd like you to take that into consideration when you see the synthesis graphs. Mortality, and this is inpatient mortality, uh, was not different between any of the studies that had enough data uh, to, to make comparisons. And as you can see, there's uh, no difference between full stenotomy and limited stenotomy in the two groups. Cardiopulmonary bypass times, again, uh, there was no difference. You can see that Borger's study that used the rapid deployment valves um, had evidence that a shorter cardiopulmonary bypass time could be achieved with rapid deployment valves. And also Mustafa's study, uh, the one from Egypt, showed that there was shorter bypass times in the minimally invasive group, uh, which was unexplained. That was mimicked in the um, cross-clamp times, again, with Borger demonstrating a very clear advantage to rapid deployment in the minimally invasive group. But overall, no difference in ischemic times. These are the summary graphs for all of the different continuous outcome measures. Uh, the ones marked in red are the ones that were statistically significant. And as you can see, there was uh, a reduction in blood loss for mini stenotomy, a reduction in ITU length of stay, and a reduction in FEV1. But all of these had trends towards uh, significance. Looking at the non-continuous measures, there was no statistically significant different difference in the deep stenal wound infection um, AF rates or rates of re-exploration between the two groups, but again, most likely because these were underpowered. So the conclusions of the Cochrane study comparing uh, hemistenotomy to full stenotomy were that using mortality in ischemic times as markers of safety, uh, the two are equally safe. The secondary outcome measures uh, showed no difference in pain, and of course that's one of the reasons that uh, people err towards minimally invasive techniques to advantage the patient. There was a statistically significant, but perhaps not clinically significant, reduction in blood loss and shorter ITU and hospital lengths of stay um, at those rates. So perhaps a financial advantage to um, the patient's stay in hospital. So a high-quality trial is still required, and actually uh, Maverick is probably the high-quality trial that we need, and we'll find out um, the answers to these questions that were supposed to be future research, quality of life, return to activities of daily living, and uh, overall uh, costs. The one thing that we still need to identify is whether the um, addition of rapid deployment valves in minimally invasive surgery uh, makes a substantial difference. So uh, what about the uh, right anterior thoracotomy uh, method, which um, 
we didn't include. And of course, the proponents of that prefer the term uh, anterior right thoracotomy. Um, the reason that we didn't include it is because the data is so scanty. There was one randomized uh, control trial from uh, India in 2013, which contained 30 patients in each group. Uh, and it showed uh, a statistically significant difference in the size of the incision, uh, which is obviously important, um, and uh, the length of stay, but not in patient rates of uh, satisfaction. Uh, there was a direct non-randomized control trial comparing mini thoracotomy versus uh, mini stenotomy uh, performed by Michelli in 2014. And the suggestion from that was that uh, there was uh, no difference between uh, the two groups. A subgroup meta-analysis and a network Bayesian meta-analysis by FAN suggested that actually there was higher rates of mortality in the mini thoracotomy group compared to the mini stenotomy group. And a best bet performed uh, by Barnforth last year also suggested uh, the same. So with the evidence that is available, uh, there's a good reason to think that mini stenotomy might be uh, the better of the two methods. However, um, a high quality, uh, quality assessment hasn't yet been performed. Finally, uh, a meta-analysis of cost performed by Hassan suggested that compared to the baseline for a full stenotomy, a mini stenotomy cost about $200 per case more, whereas a mini thoracotomy cost around $4,000 per case more. Um, so, Anterior right thoracotomy is uh, clearly something that requires further licking into, um, but for the time being, uh, the evidence for mini stenotomy uh, runs at least at equipoise and possibly with some advantages to hemi stenotomy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bilal. Are there any questions?